Hi, it's another fantastic day in Cota de Casa, Orange County, California. Today is January 8th. We're in a little oak woodland park, coastal live oak trees. Look at our weather here, it's beautiful. Here we have a new plant, a new shrub. Now it kind of looks like our native sugar bush, lemonade berry, laurel sumac, maybe even a toyon, but he's actually a type of acacia. Comes from Australia. He's probably somebody's ornamental plant in the backyard. This little wash area, maybe a seed, came down here and it uh, planted itself here a couple years ago. We get this beautiful acacia here. So there's about a thousand different species of acacias throughout the world. Most come from Australia and Africa. And this guy here, he's called an acacia longifolia. And there's three varieties or subspecies of longifolia we'll come across. One's called Acacia longifolia subspecies longifolia. That's known as a Sydney golden wattle or a longleaf wattle. These guys come from southeastern Australia. It grows a small tree about 20 feet high. California, we find them along street medians and sidewalks. Now our plant here, he's called Acacia longifolia subspecies Sephora. He's known as a coastal wattle, just a coast wattle. He's a low line shrub and you find him along the dunes and the beaches of uh, California. There's a third variety of longifolia. It's called Acacia longifolia subspecies latifolia. That comes from northern Australia. And the problem is, if you go to your local nursery, they call the subspecies longifolia and latifolia by the same name, the Sydney golden wattle. And uh, they'll sell it to you as the same plant, but really it's a different plant. So if you want that, make sure you get the right subspecies when you buy this from your nursery. So anyway, how do you tell this Sephora from the Longifolia? So first is their size. The Longifolia is more upright, grows about 30 feet high, where our Sephora here is more prostate, prostrate, sorry. He's a low growing shrub, close to the ground. Now he only gets about, uh, I don't know, about 10 feet high. All right, and second is what we call the leaves here. All right, these aren't the official leaves, but we'll call them leaves. And the longifolia leaves are long and linear and thin and narrow, and they typically have a tip. And this guy here, our Sephora, his leaves are a little more ovate. They're not as long and lanceolate. And they usually have this little rounded tip on the end. All right. And third is where they grow. Now the Longifolia variety, you'll find them more inland, whereas our Sephora here, it grows along the coast and the dunes. So now we know this guy here is a Acacia Longifolia subspecies Sephora, or what we call the coastal wattle. So a shrub is not native to Southern California, it comes to us from the east coast of New South Wales of Australia. And in the 1860s, it was introduced to California by a guy named William Walker at his Golden Gate Nursery in San Francisco. Now it's become pretty invasive up and down California coast. You find this plant from Sonoma down to San Diego. As I mentioned, he likes to grow in the sand dunes, okay? He's considered invasive, by the way, because he likes to take over or other plants. So he's described as a large, prostrate, decumbent shrub. He grows pretty close to the ground. His extremities curve upward, gets about 10 feet high and 15 feet wide. And he's got little flowers here that appear in uh, January. 
right? These little flower clusters. Okay, at the base of the little, what we'll call leaves. They're drought tolerant. They're tolerant of salt spray. And they're commonly used in dune stabilization along the beaches. They're also low cost. It's a great ornamental for your garden and your roadways and also your slopes. Let's take a closer look here at the trunk and the stems. You get inside this plant, I'll show you what it looks like inside. Okay, let's see here, all right. So here's the uh, stems at the base here. And it's got a real, real extensive root system underground. Like I said, it's great for dune stabilization. But at the end of the roots, the little nodes along the whole root, those nodes attract the bacteria, which then fixates the nitrogen in the air to like an ammonium compound. And then the roots of this plant get free ammonia from the ground. See a bunch of ants here crawling up the stem. And they play a big role in this plant life cycle. So we'll talk about that in just a little bit. Ah, so those are the uh, roots and stems. The new growth is typically like a purple color, like we have here, and they're real flexible. And the older growth down here, like I showed you, is more brownish. Here's some older growth here, and it gets a lot stiffer. Because you get to the uh, new growth here, which is all kind of purple. So the roots here really allow it to be a great plant for your dunes. And the leaves, let's talk about the leaves here, because they're not really leaves. Okay, this is called a phyllode. Some people call it a phyllode. It's really called a phyllode. Now, phyllode is really an extension of the petiole we have here. I'm gonna pull this off. There we go. It's a real flat extension. It goes outward like this. And it's not a leaf. In fact, this extension is an adaptation for this plant to survive in drought conditions. And also this specific plant in our dunes. Now this little uh, phyllode, it has more chlorophyll than a typical leaf, but unfortunately it has more transpiration, evaporates more water. So what you find is the edges of these uh, phyllodes here, where we look like leaves, the edges point towards the sun. So here, you see the sun is out there, and the edges all point towards the sun. That way they don't have the sun directly heating up or radiating on these plants or these phyllodes. So it helps reduce evaporation. Now these guys here, okay, they're light green. They're about finger long, a little bit wide. They're not as long as a longifolate variety of this plant. And you see you got little veins uh, running up the top of the plant here. At the very base of each phyllode is a little basal gland as well. And the cool thing about this plant here, it's very leathery, very thick. And it lives on these sand dunes you get a lot of sand here that kind of blows on this plant and a typical leaf will get damaged. And these guys are pretty resistant and resilient to the sand so they don't get damaged. They also are salt tolerant so the salt spray doesn't seem to affect them as much. Wow, so that's pretty cool. Now here are the, uh, what we'll call the flowers here. here we now this is a hermaphrodite. So the males and the females are on the same plant. And it reaches sexual maturity after about two or three years. It's a summer bloomer. 
But these flowers, they start to appear in January, and then they get all big and yellow and fluffy. And they're super rich in pollen, and they also uh, have a really nice fragrance. They attract a lot of uh, bees and other uh, pollinators. Now these guys will bloom through summer, and uh, September 1st, which is our March 1st in California, but September 1st in Australia is called Wattle Day. That's where they celebrate these wattle plants. Now the flowers here, when they bloom in their big yellow fashion, you can uh, cook them into fritters and you could uh, eat them. So they are edible. So that's pretty cool. So after these little flowers here, they bloom, they're bright yellow, they'll form little pea pods. And this plant is a member of the Fabaceae family, which is the pea family. So little pea pods, or legumes, will come out with all their little peas. And that's how this plant gets its name, Sephora, because the word Sephora is Arabic for pea-flowered tree. Now the pea pods will hang down They'll dry up, reveal their seeds, and the seeds are edible. You can roast them, but they're pretty hard, a little bit starchy, but they're very nutritious. They have 26% protein and a bunch of carbohydrates. And some of the seeds will germinate if you soak them in water at home. And uh, real nature though, germination is a lot more exciting. So the seeds have a little fleshy, nutritious, sweet attachment, a little glob on the end. The ants will pick these up, drag them to their underground nests, and they'll build up a whole reserve of a seed bank or cache. And the seeds then are viable for up to 50 years. But what they need is a fire. And if a fire blows over this whole plant, this whole area, the seed uh, coating will crack down and the seeds will germinate. And then you have 50 years of seeds all germinating at the same time. And this plant can give you about 12,000 seeds a year. So do the math, that's a lot of new plants. So they're real uh, difficult to control once they get going. But the good thing is, these plants are not adapted for like far dispersal. They just kind of drop to the ground or little ant colonies around here. So they're like a slow invasive plant want to call them that. If you want to grow it yourself, best in full sun. They cannot grow in the shade. They tolerate almost all soils, but not very good in overly alkaline soils. They prefer dry to moist soils. They can tolerate strong winds and salty conditions. And they're also pest tolerant. Well, there you go. This is our Acacia longifolia subspecies Sephora, our coastal wattle down here in uh, Cota de Casa. I think this is a great ornamental. So I uh, hope you liked that video. I hope it wasn't too long. Thanks for watching. Bye.